the previous videos, we have discussed about various types of the slab, which is applicable for both the reinforced concrete structures and also the pre-stressed concrete structures. We know that the reinforced concrete slab has some limitations in terms of its maximum allowable span, which exceeding it will lead to an economical design and unrealistically large thickness of the slab. This brings into the necessity of having the post-tension slabs. For the span of the slab more than 6 meters, the post-tension slab will become more cost-effective as compared to the reinforced concrete slab. Most of the post-tension slab use the unbonded tendon as it is economical. These are some advantages of the post-tension slabs, which it allows for longer span with fewer columns. The slab can be thinner, and also for some special applications, which require the slab to be crack-free in order to limit the seepage of the water or some other requirements. The table here shows the recommended span to depth ratio for the post-tension slab. The L per D ratio here can range significantly between different types of the slab system. This table here summarizes the typical depth of the slab and also the typical depth of the beam as well as the typical L per D ratio for the slab and beam. For the typical span length of the slab of 6, 8 and 12 meters, if we look at an example for the solid flat slab, the recommended thickness of the slab for 6 meters span it will be 200 mm. If the span increase to 8 meters, the recommended depth will be 250. The flat slab system is not recommended for the span of 12 meters. Therefore, the cell here is left blank. As the flat slab systems do not involve the beam, there is no recommended depth of the beam. Let's say now we look into another example, one-way slab with narrow beam. These are the recommended depth of the slab when its span is 6, 8 and 12 meters. The value here are in the form of mm. As for the beam here, the recommended depth will be 350, 500 and 750 for 6 meter, 8 meters and 12 meters span respectively. In terms of the recommended L per D ratio for the slab and the beam, the first number here represents the ratio for the slab, the second number here represents the ratio for the beam. With that, we will see that the recommended ratio for the slab is typically larger for the ratio for the beam. These numbers are recommended on the basis with the assumed GK equals to 5 kN per meter square. You may take this as a guideline for you to design for the pre-stressed concrete member, which at the end of the day, you will need to check the adequacy of the proposed sections to confirm if the slab is passed under the intended service load.